So thank you, Guillaume. So our next presenter are Nikita Ragonath and Ricardo Rocha. So Nikita is a staff software engineer at VMware, and Ricardo is a computer, computing engineer at CERN, as well as a former KubeCon and CloudNativeCon chair uh, emeritus. So today, we would, they will discuss the com how the community can work together to address project health and strengthening the ecosystem, as well as highlighting some invaluable contributions from some amazing contributors. So please welcome Nikita and Ricardo. Hey everyone, I'm Nikita. Hello, I'm Ricardo. We're here today to talk to you about uh, the work from the Technical Oversight Committee at the CNCF, and we'll talk about some tales of the cloud native community. We'll kick st things out with a, a quick reminder of the CNCF vision. Uh, at the CNCF, we try to make the cloud-native computing, computing, uh, computing ubiquitous, and we do this by making all the things cloud-native. The TOC, the Technical Oversight Committee, is uh, uh, represented here with all the, their members. So we are 11 members at the TOC. There are seats that come from the maintainers community, there are seats that come from the end users, and there's also seats from the governing board and the TOC elected seats. You can see the faces here. Uh, many of us are around for, at KubeCon. If you want to have a chat and learn more about the work or become more involved with the TOC and you see people, just reach out. We also have a panel later this afternoon at 5.25. So like Ricardo said, if you want to share feedback with us, you please join this panel and we'd love to see you there. Right, now we'll dig a bit into what we actually do at the TOC. So one of the things that uh, the, is at the core of the work is uh, managing all the projects in the CNCF uh, in, the, in the sense of evaluating their maturity levels. Uh, you can see here, two main things in this plot, and the reason I show a plot is because after many years at CERN, I, I learned to, to attract attention of physicists, a plot is always a good idea, and I hope it works here as well. Uh, and there are two main things here. One is the um, different types of maturity levels, and you can see here the biggest chunk comes from, from the sandbox, uh, and this is really the low barrier entry point for a project to join the CNCF. And it's where they start uh, interacting with the rest of the, the projects in the community and reaching out to end users in a, in a, more, in, in a nicer way, hopefully. Uh, from there, uh, once they, they think they have been uh, maturing it enough, we, we, uh, they can apply for incubation. And this is really where all, most of the due diligence is happening. Uh, where we do a, a more thorough evaluation of the project, and eventually they go to a vote, and if everything is looking okay, they move to incubation. And finally, after uh, some time in incubation, after they uh, think they are mature and we evaluate that the project becomes uh, sustainable at the long term, uh, they move to graduation. The second thing that we can see in this plot is the growth. And this is one of the challenges that we're facing right now, is the very rapid growth in the number of projects uh, joining the CNCF, and we are trying to adapt also our processes to deal with this. So we saw the different maturity levels. So one thing that we would like to shout out is the projects that joined the new maturity levels in the last six months since, since KubeCon Detroit. So here we have key clothes, Keycloak, OpenCruise, and Kubevela that joined incubation, as well as Argo and Flux uh, joining graduation. Let's give a shout out to all of these projects, everyone. So in the next couple of uh, minutes, I will have a, a few more plots to show. Um, and this is really to look at the sandbox that we saw before. Um, in here, we see a plot that shows the number of project submissions, uh, new submissions to, to join the sandbox. And we can see that they keep coming, and there's a, a trend that, that is stable in the last two and a half years, more or less. You can also see the rate of uh, projects being approved and not approved. Projects not approved, usually, it's because we don't think they fit the CNCF or because we ask for more information for them to reapply later. 
Uh, if we look at the sandbox numbers in a different way, it's actually quite interesting. So here we are looking at the pro projects that have been approved only. An interesting bit here is to look at how much diversity we have in the type of submissions coming, coming into the CNCF. And you see here projects from large areas like monitoring or service mesh, but you also see some very more niche areas like key management. And really this plot is, is not to, to be uh, very detailed, but it's really to show the diversity in the submissions. Here we were looking at the subcategory uh, distribution of the projects according to the subcategory in the CNCF landscape. Uh, if we go a bit higher level, we see the category as well. And if we group them by year, we can try to start seeing some trends maybe. Yeah. We can start seeing here some trends. So here, for example, if we look at the categories, we see on the left ap application definition and development, and we see that the submissions are pretty steady uh, in the last two and a half years. But we, we start seeing provisioning and things like orchestration where there was a bump uh, earlier. So if we move to, move to another view, which is looking at the tags, and the tags are the technical advisory groups, and they are the, the bodies in the TOC that help us focus on um, on specific areas uh, of, of the landscape. And we see here all, all, all the ones that we had submissions already. There are actually a few new ones as well. But again, if we look at app delivery, we see pretty steady uh, uh, rate of new projects joining. But if we look at security, we start seeing trends. There was a big bump in the number of submissions in the last year and a half or so. And this matches the trends we, we see in the, in the technology as well because of the recent events. And finally, the, the last one I would like to show, and then done with plots for today. Um, here, it's uh, the same view of the subcategories in the same distribution across years. And maybe this is something we can use as a tool to look a, a bit deeper into the landscape. On the left, you see, again, application definition uh, and the common, common rate of submissions across the last two and a half years. And, but if you look on further to the right with the big bump, that's actually security, and again, this follows trends in the, in, the, in, the, in the technology areas. We also see things like databases, which is curious that we don't get that many submissions in this area. It might be that these projects are not so interested in, in, in joining Cloud Native, but actually that doesn't seem to be the case. So maybe it's something to, to look a bit deeper into. So let's talk a little bit about what the TOC is working on. So one of the core items uh, that we are looking at right now is to establish something called as cloud native guideposts. As the name suggests, these are guiding points that have assisted past cloud native projects or past projects in the past uh, to mature and grow in the cloud native ecosystem. So if other projects leverage these steps to increase their adopters, contributors, or improve their maturity, they can actually find that their path to graduation is much more achievable. So what does this include? So these include uh, answers to questions like, how do you improve your project security, reliability, governance, community health, and so on. There is an open pull request that documents this, and we're actively looking for feedback. Uh, you can either join the TOC panel later this afternoon or just scan this QR code, and you'll find more of these QR codes across the slides uh, to open a link to the PR and submit your feedback there. Uh, just to be clear, this is just guidance. This is not requirements to move between levels. Having said that, we are also reworking some of the criteria for projects to move uh, from incubation to graduation. This is clearly a very huge effort, which has a direct impact on the technical vision of the CNCF. So we are first looking to collect feedback from maintainers and community members. So you can reach out to both Ricardo and me and other TOC members during KubeCon if you also want to provide more open-ended feedback. Now, I guess most of you have seen the cloud native landscape, and I wouldn't be surprised if you find it overwhelming and confusing. In fact, the TOC ourselves sometimes look like this when we are reviewing proposals for projects that want to join the CNCF. But Joe Bira once aptly described this as beautiful chaos. And this is what innovation looks like. It's like a tropical rainforest. It's chaotic, it's messy, but it's also a source of genetic innovation. Andrew Randall also uh, called this model of letting a thousand flowers bloom being a core strength of the CNCF. The lack of gatekeeping is what drives innovation. And the TOC also works to bring order out of this chaos uh, 
through projects moving from sandbox to incubation to graduation. Like We could also see that in the data that Ricardo just presented. Our hope is also that in the next coming months, we are going to explore ways to make the landscape more easy to consume so that no one has to look like this when they talk about it again. Now, we talked a lot about what the TOC is working on, but managing the complexity of this landscape is actually a community effort. And like Ricardo mentioned, uh, CNCF has groups called TAGS or technical advisory groups that focus on a particular area like security, storage, runtime, and so on. So let's see what they are and what they've been up to. As a bonus, we also asked TAG leads to nominate a few individuals who've been doing great work in the community. Let's see who they are. Right, let's, let's start with tax security. So tax security has been really busy in the last six months and uh, their, their highlights uh, from, from this period have been the work on the sub software supply chain policy project and the white paper. Uh, they've introduced EMEA time zone meetings, which I'm sure are very uh, helpful for a lot of us uh, attending KubeCon this week, as well as running lightweight threat models. They would like to highlight the work, incredible work by John in the software supply chain policy project, as well as Rowan and Marco for setting up the new time zone meetings and running the lightweight threat models. Tag Runtime has published and is also working on several white papers to answer questions like, what does edge native mean? What are the various batch scheduling options available in the ecosystem today? And on the CDI, or the container device interface side of things, they've been busy adding support, C CDI support to multiple container runtimes, like container D, cryo, and so on. The newest and shiniest thing on the radar in tag runtime has been a proposal for a WASM working group. I know it's been a pretty hot topic in the community recently, and this uh, working group is going to provide a dedicated space to discuss this topic. If you're interested, please comment on this GitHub issue, and you can scan this QR code to know more. We'd also like to give a shout out to Kate for leading the IoT and Edge working group, Alex for leading the batch working group, and Alexander for all the CDI efforts. So if you're interested in a particular topic, for example, we had a tag runtime uh, session just yesterday, and folks reached out to us that they are interested in starting new working groups on several topics. So if you're interested in a particular topic and want to discuss it, please reach out to all of these tags, actually. All right, next we have Tag App Delivery. They've been extremely busy uh, coming up with this platform, new platforms white paper. You can follow the QR code to get more information. They also have a new uh, shiny website and you have the link here, please go and check. And especially that they, they have a really nice uh, KubeCon booth here. Uh, I passed by yesterday, it's uh, really live and busy, lots of nice discussions going, going through there. So they also have a nice brochure. If you have time in the sponsor hall, just go and, and check their booth. For Tag App Delivery, uh, the work in the platform's white paper, there's a big shout out to Abby and Abinav. Uh, there's Colin that has been working hard in the new website and making uh, sure that uh, the paper is published there. And finally, Leon that has been uh, essential for the, for the white paper as well, but, but she's doing a lot of work in the booth and, and had a lot of ideas uh, how to make it attractive. And tax storage has been an amazingly productive spree working on multiple white papers. One of them is a joint collaboration with the data on the Kubernetes community group for a white paper related to patterns of running data on top of Kubernetes. With that, we'd also like to give a shout out to Melissa, Patrick, and Alvaro from the data on the Kubernetes community group for all their help on this. Next, we have Tag Environmental Sustainability. This is a, a newer tag that has been really busy uh, kicking things off. Um, but in addition to that, they already started doing a lot of work. The first one that they would like to highlight is defining the software carbon intensity for the CNCF projects. Again, you have the QR code, and you can also see the results from, from their survey. Uh, there's a new sustainability chapter in the GitOps working group, and that has been a lot of work to set up as well. And they have a shiny new website. The shout out here goes to Nikki. She's been essential to setting up this sustainability chapter in the GitOps working group. So really uh, thanks to her for all the work. Okay, 
we have a lot of more tax to cover. So like <laughs> talking about tag absorbability, uh, they facilitated the vision for adding continuous profiling data as a signal type in open telemetry, which was a huge effort that spanned multiple community discussions. There's also a proposal, it's not a working group yet, but there is a proposal to create a working group uh, to conduct research and analysis into the various absorbability query languages available in the ecosystem today and deliver a set of recommendations that can be turned into a standard with the reference implementation. Uh, if you'd like, if you have opinions or ideas about this working group, again, please comment on this GitHub issue. We'd like to give a shout out to Ryan for leading all the profiling effort, Ken for leading a working group last year related to uh, creating an open telemetry demo, and Vijay and Chris for the Observability Query Languages Proposal Initiative. Next, we have Tag Network. Uh, they've been very busy setting up this mesh-free playground for all the projects. You have the QR code and the link. I, I've tried it out, and we can all go and play. Uh, the shout out here goes to uh, Pranav. He's been like the, getting the prize of chop wood, carry water uh, in this area, and he's been essential on setting up the mesh-free playground. <laughs> And TAC contributor strategy has been doing great with contributor growth and mentoring initiatives, including a maintainer circle event here at KubeCon yesterday. Uh, they've also been working, uh, helping the TOC recently. So I talked a lot about reworking the graduation criteria in the beginning. Uh, TAC contributor strategy has been an outstanding help on it. Uh, so they're spinning up a short-term group to collect feedback uh, from the community members and maintainers around it, and they're looking for a leader who has experience in leading projects like these. So if you are interested, please reach out to TAC Contributor Strategy. We'd also like to give a shout out to Jay, who has been leading all the maintainer circle events, including the one here at KubeCon, uh, sorry, Dave, and then Jay has been uh, running mentoring initiatives with the Maori community in New Zealand with the idea that we can replicate some of this work to bring more underrepresented groups into CNCF projects over time. So I hope this gives an overview of what all the tags are working on, what's really going on in the CNCF space, and how contributing to all of these tags helps give a more broader understanding of the ins and outs of all the projects. You saw a lot of graduated incubating sandbox projects and how all of these projects coexist together and also gain a visibility into a single or multiple domains within the landscape. So I hope you all get involved and like the wonderful tulips of Amsterdam, come see the community in bloom. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.